New to Python? You're not the only one Googling these five questions. And yes, one of them is embarrassing. From mysterious error messages to why won't this print work, today we're answering the stuff tutorial skip. Okay, so you're excited to code, but first you need Python installed and an editor and some resources. So where do you even begin? The absolute first step is to get the Python interpreter on your machine. Head over to python.org and download the latest stable version. Once you're on the site, first select Downloads, and there are versions for Windows, Mac OS, and other platforms. Those other platforms include Linux, Windows, and basically everything else. I'm on a Mac, so let's select Mac OS. The latest version is 3.13.5. By the time you watch this video, of course, that may have changed, so the advice is to always select the latest stable version. Select Download the Universal Installer to install it on Mac OS. So for Windows, there's an equivalent installer, and for the other platforms, they have their own process for installation, so you'll just have to follow the instructions. Once you've got it installed, open your terminal or command prompt and type python space dash dash version to make sure it's there. So next you'll need an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. You don't need anything fancy to start. I'd recommend PyCharm Community Edition. It's free, it's super powerful, and it'll make you feel like a pro from day one. It'll also prevent a lot of common errors. Here on the JetBrains site, let's take a look at how to download PyCharm. So click on Developer Tools, and as you can see, they have a ton of different tools for different languages. So we're looking for PyCharm. So let's select this here in the middle. Let's go ahead and click Download. And there's versions available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. If you scroll down a little bit, here's the PyCharm Community Edition. So you can go ahead and select that and the process will start. But if you don't want to install an IDE on your machine, try an online IDE. There are a few like Python Anywhere or IDE One. They'll let you code right in your browser, so there's no setup required. Next, you need some resources. The internet's flooded with Python tutorials, but the quality's all over the place. Start with the official Python documentation. It's actually really good. Online, there are lots of courses, plus there are tons of fantastic YouTube channels that break down concepts visually. Look for resources that offer cheat sheets or new to Python resources. Check the latest resources in the description for this video below. Next, you need to practice. So this is crucial. Don't just read, you actually need to do. Start with something simple, like printing Hello World to confirm your setup works. Then look for beginner-friendly coding challenges. Sites like Project Euler, Code Wars, or Leak Code. The goal is to apply what you learn immediately. So to recap, start simple, get Python running, Pick a user-friendly editor, try small coding challenges, don't overthink it. The faster you get writing, the faster you'll learn. So look at that, you've got your first Python program. But no one's paying you to write Hello World. They expect great apps to solve real problems. What happens when you get some weird error that you don't understand? So you write your first few lines of code, hit run, and bam, syntax error or indentation error. So why is Python so picky? Unlike other programming languages, that use curly braces to define code blocks, Python's unique because it relies on consistent indentation with either spaces or tabs to structure your code. Misplaced indentations or forgetting small details like colons can immediately lead to these frustrating errors. Let's break down why these happen and see how to fix them. Python uses indentation to know which lines of code belong together. For example, all the lines in an if statement or for loop must have all the exact same level of indentation. If they don't, Python's gonna throw an indentation error. So here's an example of incorrect indentation. And here's the correct way, using four spaces. A very common syntax error is to forget the colon at the end of the if statements, for loops, while loops, or function definition. Python needs the colon to know where the new code block is starting. So the fix is simple, just add a colon. Always use four spaces for indentation and avoid tabs. It might seem weird, but mixing tabs and spaces can create invisible errors that are incredibly hard to spot. Your IDE is your best friend here. It will auto-format the code for you and use linters to uncover these issues. IDEs will highlight syntax and indentation errors as you type, helping you catch them even before you run your code. Let's walk through a simple for loop. So I want to print numbers from 0 to 2. Easy, right? So first I'll make a mistake. See the syntax error in valid syntax? Python will tell us exactly where. Now let's fix it by adding the colon and indenting the print statement with four spaces. Perfect. Now it runs. Python strictness makes code incredibly readable once you get the hang of it, but it definitely takes some practice. So stick to four spaces for indentation, never use tabs, 
Double check your colons and let your IDE help you out. All right, so you've defined a variable, just a number, maybe a list. Suddenly, name error, type error. Python's not happy and you're not sure why. It feels like the rules just keep changing. But it's not random. It's all about where your variables live, what they really are, and the silent chaos of mutable lists. Let's untangle it. Think of variables in Python not as boxes holding values, but as labels or pointers that point to data stored somewhere in your computer's memory. When you write x equals 5, x is a label pointing to the number 5. Variables have scope, meaning where they're accessible. A variable created inside a function is local and can't be used outside that function. Trying to use a variable before it's defined or outside its scope leads to errors like this. This can also happen from a simple typo in the variable name. Python's dynamically typed mean you don't have to explicitly declare a variable's type, but it still cares about types. You'll encounter type error when you try to perform operations on incompatible data types, like trying to add a number to a string. To fix this, you need to explicitly convert the string to an integer using int. And if you want to combine a number with a string, convert the number to a string using str. Lists are one of Python's most powerful data structures, but they can be tricky because they're mutable. This means you can change them in place. A common mistake is trying to access all the items in a list using an index that doesn't exist leading to errors like this. Our Python lists are zero indexed, so the first item is at index zero. When you assign one list to another, like b equals a, both variables actually point to the same list in memory. So if you modify b, a also changes. This can lead to unexpected side effects. Python Tutor is an amazing free online tool. You can paste your code and it will visually show you how Python executes each line, how variables are assigned, and how lists change in memory. It's fantastic for building that accurate mental model. Think of variables as pointers to data. Be mindful of their scope, ensure data types are compatible for operations, and be careful with lists. They can change in unexpected ways if you're not aware of mutability and referencing. Once you've got all your variables defined, you want to do more than just run your code once. You want to loop it, repeat actions, or make decisions based on the conditions. But this is where new devs hit the wall. Infinite loops and mixing up equals with double equals. This is where your code gets its brain. Python has for loops for iterating over sequences, like lists and ranges, and while loops for repeating as long as conditions are true. For loops are great for when you know how many times you want to repeat, or you're going through each item in a collection. While loops should be used when you want to repeat until a certain condition is met. The biggest pitfall with while loops is the infinite loop. This happens when your exit condition is never met, and the loop runs forever. Always ensure there's a mechanism inside your while loop that will eventually make the condition false, like count plus equals one above. You can also use break to exit a loop early or continue to skip the next iteration. Conditionals allow you to make decisions. If statements execute only when a condition is true. Elif or else if checks another condition if the previous if or else if was false. Else execute if none of the above conditions were true. Equals versus double equals. The single equal sign is for assignment, giving a variable a value. The double equal sign is for comparison, checking if two things are equal. Using single equal versus double equal for an if statement won't give you a syntax error, but it will lead to unexpected and incorrect behavior. So you've probably heard that Python has awesome libraries and you can do almost anything from web scraping to data analysis. But when you try to use one and you get an import error or a scary red error message and you just freeze, how do you deal with pip to figure out what those tracebacks mean? So this is where Python's power truly shines and where you'll learn to be a real problem solver. Many powerful libraries aren't built into Python. You need to install them separately using Python's package manager, pip. Open your terminal and type in pip install library name. For example, pip install request to install the request library for making web requests. Once you get it installed, you need to tell your Python script you want to use it with the import statement. If you get import errors, it usually means you either haven't installed the library or there's a typo in the module name. Also, avoid from module import star, as it can lead to name conflicts. That intimidating red text that appears when your program crashes is called a traceback. It looks scary, but it's actually Python trying to help you. It tells you exactly where and why your code broke. Let's look at a common example. All right, so we've got a simple code example loaded up in our editor. Notice I've turned on line numbers so we can make it e so it'll make it easier when we look at the traceback to see what we're looking at. So let's run this code and we get our error message. So the first line here, traceback, simply tells us that we've got an error. 
this next line file, file name, line number, and module. So the, this simply tells us where the file, which file the error was in, the line number was found at, and module simply means that this is a top level code. And this next line is the actual line where the error occurred. And you can see here, it actually highlights it for us. And then this final line tells us the type of error that it was, which is key error, and then what, what the error was. So we're looking up a key that doesn't exist. So this information in totality, kind of read from the bottom, will help you figure out what's going on with your code. And one more thing here is you notice we finished with an exit code of one. Exit code of one simply means failure. Uh, exit code or any non-zero value is failure. Exit code of zero means success. So let's fix this code. There are a few ways we could do it. The easiest way is to just add this key. And let's say Alice lives in New York. Run the code, all good. And notice we exit with a code of zero, meaning success. So errors are not failures, they're your friends. They actually tell you what's wrong and where to look. Learn to read those tracebacks and you'll unlock the immense power of Python's libraries, transforming your code from basic scripts to powerful applications. Check out this video to learn how you can convert your awesome new code into an executable for Windows. So there you have it. We covered the top five beginner questions, getting started with setup tools, conquering those pesky syntax errors, understanding how variables and lists truly work, mastering control flow with loops and conditionals, and finally, confidently using libraries and debugging errors. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.